Uh, welcome once again to North Park Church is 180. I am Pastor Ryan, one of the pastors here at North Park Church, and grateful for those of you that participate online and, and watch these lessons that go out. And uh, today we are going to be uh, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. So if you have a Bible, uh, hopefully you do, turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Today's title of our lesson is a likely reason for the spiritual insecurity that you just can't shake. A likely reason for the spiritual insecurity that you just cannot shake. Uh, <clears throat> the um, R.C. Sproul tells the story, uh, or kind of recounts the story of Alice in Wonderland with uh, what we're going to be talking about today. But just listen to what R.C. Sproul says. He says, I think of the story of Alice in Wonderland. When Alice in her travels comes to the fork in the road and she can't decide whether to take the left fork or the right fork, she looks up and there's the Cheshire cat in the tree grinning at her. And she asks the Cheshire cat, which road should I take? And the Cheshire cat replies saying, that depends. Where are you going? Alice says, I don't know. Then what does he say? Then I guess it doesn't matter. What I want to talk to you about today is that uh, many people, many people who say I'm a Christian or I believe that Jesus died for my sins on the cross even, uh, who call themselves, who identify as Christians, don't know where they're going. They live as if, as if the will of God doesn't matter. They really don't know what they're supposed to be doing for the kingdom of God. They don't inform themselves intentionally of that, even though they would say, yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, I know Jesus Christ. But they have no kingdom concern, no intentional kingdom-minded concern. They do not seek for it like they should if they're a Christian, if they're really born again. When it comes to the daily forks in their road, they don't know which path to take um, that would honor God. And, and when you don't know where God wants you to go and what he intends for you to do, there will be a spiritual insecurity that you just can't shake. God intends for us to be informed of what his will is, knowing what he wants us to do, knowing what to do, where he wants us to do it, in other words. Otherwise, if you don't know that, there will be a spiritual insecurity that you just cannot shake. Uh, you will come to the forks in the road not knowing where you're going, and then it doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, put your eyes on Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 here. Jesus is the one speaking, and he says, But seek first... Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Now again, we're looking at a verse, uh, and notice that it's verse 33 in chapter 6 of Matthew, so we're all the, already all the way down to verse 33. So what's going on in Matthew chapter 6? Well, Matthew chapter 6 is that um, famous uh, chapter where Jesus says, Do not store treasure here on earth. Do not lay up treasure on earth, but in heaven. Remember that? In Matthew 6, 21, Jesus says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And then Jesus, just a few verses before ours, talks about the Gentiles, who they seek after uh, what to eat, what to drink, what to wear. And um, that Jesus speaking to those who, who are following him, that they ought not to live that way that their heavenly father knows their needs in other words and he knows what they require for daily living yet the gentiles seek after those things and that implies what that they seek those things more than god and his will more than god and his will we're talking about everyday life that the priority of everyday life is of greater concern to the heart and mind than Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And Jesus turns it back, the focus back where it needs to be, the priority of the heart and mind back to where it needs to be. Seek first 
the kingdom, he says, and its righteous and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. All these things that are required for daily living. Now it's um, interesting that you know Paul in Romans 3, 10 and 11 says that no one seeks for God. No one understands, right? No one seeks for God. No one understands what? No one understands what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness. No one seeks to understand. Everyone lives horizontally thinking, not vertically thinking. And no one thinks to think vertical. No one thinks that way. It is impossible for man to start thinking vertically because his heart is so set on thinking horizontally, thinking about what the day-to-day -day needs of his life are and seeking those as a first priority. And because of that, man is clueless to the kingdom of God and the will of God that pertains to that kingdom. There is a way of righteousness that we do not know. No one is righteous. No, not one, Romans 3 says, right? And it's astounding that many people who call themselves Christians resemble people who don't call themselves Christians and live just as horizontal as those other people do, not vertically minded, but horizontally minded, still uh, wrapped up in worries and fears and anxious about the everyday life that the Gentiles live, that Jesus refers to, right? And that ought not to be. We as Christians need to be informed as a first priority, what is God's will? And as a Christian, it is your most primary concern to in, be informed of what God's will is, what he has for you to be doing, where he wants you, and what he wants you to be accomplishing for his kingdom. Uh, but what I run into often is many um, uninformed Christians concerning the, the knowledge of God's will. They're not seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness. It's being like, you know, it would be a lot like a person that says, you know, they're a sniper and yet they've never even fired their weapon or engaged in a battle. You can't really call yourself a sniper, right? If you call yourself a Christian, then a Christian seeks first the kingdom and his righteousness. Well, what is, it, what is meant by seek first? Seeking first literally means seeking first. To seek first means to seek above all other things first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So how do you begin seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness? Actively pursuing the will of God. You must be born again. You must be born again. This, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness begins with kingdom admittance, right? Right? Uh, and Jesus tells us about this. John the Baptist prepared the way, uh, saying, Repent, what the kingdom of heaven has come. And Jesus exclaimed, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew 4, 17, talking about the kingdom, right? You must be born again. Repent. That indicates that people are what? Just living their lives, everyday lives, not thinking about God's kingdom, not concerned with God's kingdom. And here comes Jesus, and he says, Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You must be born again. John 3.3 3 says that you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. The value of it. The purpose of it. You can't see it unless you're born again. That's how you begin to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. We after being born again, after God puts his spirit into us, pours his spirit into our hearts, we can see the value, we can start to see the value of God's kingdom. Through God's grace, we begin to seek first his will for our lives and have a kingdom concern. It begins to be a priority, uh, a primary priority of our lives to seek first the kingdom. We begin to adjust our lives in other words we begin to acclimate uh, to what the kingdom of God uh, has called us to as a first priority so every day for the believer what happens is they begin first in the morning they wake up 
and they begin seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness. We wake up in the morning to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. We spend time in prayer, having a quiet time with God, seeking above all else to know Christ, to commune with Christ so that we can know and accomplish his will, to know him. This prepares us to obey his will. In other words, to be spending time with God as the first priority. We wake up in the morning to be with him and that begins to already adjust our life, acclimate ourselves to the kingdom of God, the kingdom will that God has prepared for us that day. We want to engage God in the morning so we can begin engaging or continue engaging God the rest of the day. We want to engage God in the morning so we can continue engaging God in his will for the rest of the day as a first priority. Because there's things that lie ahead in our daily affairs, right? Forks in the road. Uh, things that we don't know are going to be in our day, things that we do know that are going to be a part of our day likely. So we are we preparing with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the morning, seeking first him, seeking him to be able then to seek first his ways for the day. Jesus taught his disciples to pray in Matthew 6.10, your kingdom come, what? Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What does it mean to do someone's will? It means uh, to put their wants, their wishes, their desires, their goals above your own, right? Seeking first, seeking first to accomplish what they want more than what we desire. God's will is all the more so. What does God want? What does he desire for us? Uh, are we wanting to do that? Um, accomplish that more than what we want to see happen personally. This is the goal of the Christian, the objective of the Christian, uh, to do what God wills more than what we desire until what we desire is what God wills. You know, Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and what? He will give you the desires of your heart because your delight is such in him that you can now uh, have the same desire same goals as god and his will uh, think about that because you seek first god as a uh, as a passionate the first passionate priority of your day you seek first god you begin to know him and you begin to understand what he loves and what he hates and like pastor lynn always says you begin to learn what he loves and what he hates and you start to love and hate those same things and you, get, you have the desires of your heart, and they're, they're starting to match who God is. Think about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he said, Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. He wasn't praying because he, to, for God to, to, to acclimate to his will. That's not what Jesus meant in, in terms of delight. Jesus delighted, in other words, to do God's will. What he wasn't delighting about was being separated from the Father when all of God's wrath was placed on him for our sin. That's not, he wanted, his delight was the Father. And to do his will, then he didn't want to be separated from him for a moment. And we, as God's children, we want, uh, we've been, you know, uh, let me say it this way, as, as, as the unregenerate, as unbelievers, we were separated from God in our sin. And we've been reconciled to God as, uh, as made regenerate, new creations in Christ. We don't ever want to be separated from God again. That's, that's a horrible life, T to be separated from the living God. He is our delight. Therefore, why wouldn't his will be your delight? If you're a Christian, then that means that your delight is God. Why is his will not your delight? David prayed, Psalm 143.10, listen to these words, Teach me, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit, Holy Spirit, lead me on level ground. Let me help you understand something. To be a Christian, to be born again, is to be, by the grace of God, brought into a kingdom that we know very little about. 
we know very little about. And God is so graciously giving us, given us his spirit and his word to begin understanding what it means to truly seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and begin understanding his ways because we've never known them, we've never understood them, we've lived only in our ways and through the course of this world. And now there is a kingdom that we have been, by the grace of God, brought into through Jesus Christ and we must, he must teach us to do his will. He must lead us by the power of his spirit on level ground to walk in that will. We must be learners of the will of God. People who wake up every morning intentionally realizing that I don't know very much about God's kingdom and I must inform myself of his kingdom. God has given me his spirit to build capacity to understand kingdom living and to be able to walk in obedience to his word and therefore grow a greater measure of understanding what the will of God is. So do you call yourself a Christian? Then your primary concern is learning to obey the will of God, as God has called you to obey it. And God is very specific. Each one of us is called to God's will in a specific way, to, to walk in it, to discern it, and to accomplish it. Uh, to discern God's will, his call upon your life. If you're a Christian, that's a primary concern for you. What he wants you to be doing, where he wants you to be doing it for his kingdom. And uh, if you're born again, there will be a spiritual insecurity in you that you just cannot shake if you're not finding and functioning in God's specific will for you. Un until we intentionally seek first his kingdom and his righteousness personally, uh, we will be unable to shake that lack of confidence we feel in our day to day. And we all know that confidence comes from knowing what you're doing, be being informed, well informed, understanding uh, what is expected and knowing what to do with that. And God has put that in his word and has placed his spirit in you to understand what his will is as we seek to know we can begin to understand with confidence what god has for us specifically to do for the kingdom that will translate then into our day-to-day -day. our day-to-day -day, the way we live our day in other words there is still too much of us uh, that uh, in us that seeks first our own comfort and convenience every day there is still too much of that in us um, instead of intentionally pursuing God's will, we need to, um, in continual repentance, move away from that way of thinking where we still seek first all those other things, comfort, convenience, before intentionally pursuing the will of God each day. We're not paying attention, in other words, to the will of God ordained for us to walk in each day. And that requires knowing what he's called us to, what he has for us to do. Yeah, each day, each day, has been ordained by God, and each day has kingdom service for us to be engaged in, to be seeking first. In other words, Moses prayed in Psalm 90, verse 12, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our what? Days. Days. Each day. Our days need to be organized and on the same page as the will of God. And for us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness requires learning to number our days aright. So that we can live in the wisdom of God. Uh, each day requires God's wisdom. We have none and he has it all. God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path uh, each day. And we're to live in the light of that wisdom each day, walking in his will through a confused, fallen, dark world. The will of God is a daily thing that we are to be moving in, functioning in, living in as a first priority. <clears throat> it's here that I want to help you understand probably how you think about the will of God. And so it's, you know... Um, when you're interacting with the Word of God, you don't want to be lying to yourself. You don't want to be saying, well, yeah, I don't struggle with that. No, you do struggle with what we're teaching. Um, the truth is, this is probably the way you think about the will of God right now, what I'm about to teach you. You probably think of the will of God more as an event, 
uh, you're probably event minded when it comes to the will of God. What I mean by that is uh, it's the will of God's not simply an event where this big thing that you're praying about that you need God's wisdom and help with. No, it's a daily body of work we're called to that requires, listen, that requires growing the skill to discern it in all aspects of our lives. Every day we require God's wisdom, God's spirit to teach us uh, that we're walking in a body of work that God has willed for us to walk in. God has prepared it for us. Uh, Think about this, Ephesians 4.10 For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, watch now, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in. That we should walk in. Think about that. He's prepared each day for us to walk in his will. Um, Good works. Good works. Jesus said this, John 4.34, this is so amazing. He said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. We eat food daily. We need it to survive. We need it to sustain, right? And Jesus said his food was to do the will of the Father and accomplish the body of work he was given, prepared beforehand that he should walk in. So lots of times we think of the will of God as an event, this big thing. So uh, Jesus had this big thing happen, right? The event was the cross. What being on his cross, that's uh, this a big event that took place in our history for our sin. But understand this, get a hold of this. Jesus had a daily obedience to the will of God, a body of work that culminated in his cross, taking up his cross. That's why he said, it is finished. Because he completed the salvific work that he had come to accomplish. Because every day, Jesus sought as a first priority the kingdom um, and the Father's righteousness, doing what the Father righteously wanted him to do, trusting his Father with his daily needs. Jesus' daily obedience to the will of God prepared him for his cross. Uh, Turn to Hebrews chapter 5. This is so amazing. Speaking of Jesus' obedience to the daily will of God, Hebrews chapter 5, verses 7 through 9. Listen to this. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Jesus walked obediently to the daily will of God, never missing the mark, not once, never turning off into sin, never turning off into self-indulgence or self-centeredness. Jesus walked every day feeding on the will of God and it culminated in his cross uh, to the point where he said it is finished and then he died he was in the ground and God raised him from the dead because his works were complete holy finished perfect the spotless lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and that uh, was because Jesus lived as a first priority, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, Jesus' daily obedience to God's will. But I fear many of us think of the will of God as an event only. A big moment in our lives where, oh no, now we need God's wisdom, now we need God's power. And I, and I think we do this because we've lost the concept of looking to God for daily bread. Looking to God for daily bread bread. Uh, We don't know how to rely on God anymore for daily bread, daily provision. Day by day by day, we need you, God. We can't live without you. We need you to to, um, supply uh, the provision that only you can supply because we don't have the means. We don't have the resources. We don't have the capability. Well, we have all of that stuff. We have an abundance of means, resources, and capabilities. And now we live with a mentality where we don't think we need God. And daily, we don't think we need God. We only need him for the big, big stuff is the mentality that we have. Listen to Proverbs 38 through 9. 
Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me. Watch, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? That's what's happened. Because we have such plenty in our regular day-to-day, we forget our daily need for God and to feed on His will. We're not intentionally walking in good works prepared for us each day because we're oversatiated in our abundance, too full of the world to feed on God's will. We're not hungering for it. Instead, we're lulled asleep. We're lulled asleep by this world into a spiritual slumber, insensitive to the will of God because of the plenty around us. I truly believe that the minds of many Christians are functioning just like the rest of culture where their thoughts are frequently set, set on the things of this world and asleep to God. Therefore, they are asleep to the kingdom will of God prepared each day for them to walk in. Their minds are not present and alert to God's will because they haven't trained them to be. They haven't trained them to be. When this is the case, there will be a spiritual insecurity you just can't shake. If you're saved, you can't be okay with this. You can't be okay with living this way. You will not be settled. You will not be able to get rid of that insecurity because it's God saying that you are not intentionally seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness. You know in your heart of hearts that's the case, that you're living too loosely separated in the mind from Christ and too conformed to the pattern of this world. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to stop there because I think uh, that's a good stopping spot for us. And next week we're going to learn to intentionally, what it means to intentionally discern God's will. We need to be Christians who learn to intentionally discern the will of God. But as I said, seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness starts with kingdom admittance. Jesus said, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's time to be right with God. It's time to stop living for all these other things and seek first the kingdom and his righteousness And God will take care of your needs. He will take care of you. He will supply what you need. But understand that God supplies what we need because we need those things to keep pursuing on 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 first priorities for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything that God provides in my life is not meant for me simply just to enjoy, although God says enjoy it. It's not meant to enjoy and quit seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness. It's meant so that I can keep seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness. That begins with a personal relationship with Christ, personally knowing Jesus Christ as Savior. Because you cannot know the will of someone you do not get to know. You must know Christ. You must know him in a way that you know more and more what his will is. That comes through... uh, you know, what what Jesus said, repent. Repent. Turn away. In other words, be born again. Understanding that God has a will for you and you must be born again to know it and to walk in it. Uh, Jesus died for your sins. Uh, Scripture says he died for your sins. That he was buried, according to the Scriptures, that he was raised and many people saw him. Eyewitnesses to his resurrection validation that Jesus completed the works of God, uh, the the salvation that we required. Put your faith in Jesus Christ uh, and um, begin understanding what it means to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. As always, we're here for you. And reach out to us. Uh, If you're a man, reach out to Aaron Robertson. If you're a woman, reach out to Jill Lamson. And um, truly reach out to us so that we can help you understand what it means to seek first according to what God's word says. We love you, and we'll see you next time.